blocking function, well, blocks the authentication process so you can process the user before they are created. But why would you want to block the authentication flow? Doesn't that sound like a bad thing? Well, not at all. Blocking functions give you more control over the entire authentication process, allowing you to reject users if they don't match a specific criteria. You can check, does this user have the right email address? Do they belong to a list of authorized users in Firestore? Are they in the right GitHub organization? This is completely custom to your use case. But if we want to go further, we need to break it down. Before we begin, I want to call out that blocking functions are available for both Cloud Functions Generation 1 and 2. In this video, I'm going to be using Generation 2, but the concepts are the same and the code is similar. Blocking functions work a bit differently than your typical function. So again, let's break it all down. The typical serverless function structure is that a function is triggered after an event or an object is created. A user is created, an image is uploaded, and so on. And this is ideal for situations where you know that the object is valid. However, what if you need to inspect the object before it is finalized and saved to the system? And that is exactly what you get with auth blocking functions. Blocking functions hold up the event before it can be completed. This blocking time allows you to perform processing on the server before a user is saved to the system. A user record is not saved at this point in the process. Only the data needed to perform the pre-processing is surfaced via the blocking function. Here, you can perform any operations to determine if they are a valid user or if they need any other custom actions applied. So how do we tell the blocking function to reject the user? Well, with an HTTPS error. An HTTPS error is imported from the identity library. You construct a new HTTPS error and provide a standard code and details. The standard code comes from a list of predefined codes that map to HTTP status codes, such as unauthenticated, permission denied, not found, and much more. Check the link in the description for the entire list. These details can be anything custom for your use case. Here, the email is invalid, so we're just specifying that it's an unauthorized email. Now, this scenario covers blocking before an account is created, but we can still have control even after this event. Blocking functions allow you to block before a user signs in. And this means that the user has been created, but their authentication token has not been issued yet. And what's the difference here? And why would you want to block before signing in? Well, imagine you need to check if a user belongs to a GitHub organization before allowing them into the system. But then, sometimes later, they're removed from the organization. By blocking before signing in, we can check to see if they still belong to the organization and reject the event if they no longer belong. Now we've covered how we can block a user from either being created in the first place or before even signing in. But what about actually accepting the user? What do we need to do in that case? Well, if you simply want to accept the user, you don't need to do anything. However, if you want to modify the user in some way, you can return an object that specifies those changes. The object can be one of the following fields, display name, disabled, email verified, photo URL, custom claims, session claims, which only works before user signed in, and this is great for the use cases where you want to create the user, but then have them disabled if they don't fit the requirements yet. You can integrate with an external API to set a photo URL for the user. And of course, there's custom claims. Now, I don't want to digress totally into another topic, but custom claims are an amazing feature that allow you to assign properties to a user that can be used in security roles. So I highly recommend checking them out. So now let's deploy. So let's make sure that you're in the functions directory and then run npm run deploy. This will ensure that all the needed APIs are enabled, zip up your functions, and then finally deploy them out to Cloud Functions. So blocking functions are a bit unique in that you have to register them in the Firebase console. Here in the console, I'm first going to enable two providers so I can log in, Google and Anonymous Authentication. And next, I'm going to go to the Settings panel and set the functions for before account creation and before sign-in. So now let's see it in action. So now I'm going to log in with Google, and it accepts it because my email ends in at google.com. 
So now I hope you know what a blocking function is and why you'd want to block in the first place. So if you want to know more about blocking functions and see more blocking functions content, then drop a comment and let me know what you want to see. But that's all for now. And if you liked this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.